Hello again, friends. Welcome to the Don't Stifle Me podcast, open conversations with guests based in but not bound to the music and entertainment industry. I'm your host, Jacob Stiefel, a singer-songwriter from Fort Payne, Alabama, but now living here in Nashville, Tennessee. This episode is sponsored by me. Yes, I am a singer-songwriter. I have music available on iTunes, and there's merchandise and tour dates all up at jacobstiefel.com. And you can find me and follow me at all social medias at Jacob Stiefel. Now, on with the show. My guest this episode is fellow Alabamian singer-songwriter extraordinaire, Adam Hood. Adam is a badass songwriter, a great singer, a great guitar player, and one of the nicest and most fun guys to be around that I've had the privilege to know in all of my 29 years of life. It's always a pleasure to sit down and talk with him. It was today, and luckily enough, I got this one down on tape. Well, not really on tape. I got this one recorded just for you guys. So here is, for your listening pleasure, my conversation with Adam Hood. Uh, Adam Hood is in my house. Yeah, man. This is fun. How's that, how's that coffee treating you over there? This is really good coffee. Is it special coffee? It's Chance calls it my Stiefel rocket fuel. It's pretty rockety. But it's good. I like strong coffee. Yeah. Why would you not make strong coffee? Man, my mom used to make the weakest coffee, and, and we bought her a Keurig. And before we did, it was like, but the funny thing was, like, the first cup of coffee, it'd be the same thing, like jet fuel. Yeah. And then the second one, it would almost be like she didn't put any more coffee in it. You know what I With mean? With the so Keurig? I ran it through. No, like, just when oh, before. Oh, yeah. yeah. I shouldn't pick on my mother. <laughs> <laughs> she she made weak coffee. I can't do the Keurig thing, man. I, I drink at least two or three cups of coffee. So if I have, uh-huh. if I, well, we have a Keurig, but if I use the Keurig, it would be like put one in, make it, and then stand there and drink that while you're making the second one. <laughs> so I would get nothing done. So. That's really funny, man. I, that's probably what I should do too, honestly. I'm, I'm the same way you are, but we use it, you know, and we use it just because we don't have a coffee pot. Yeah. But, and it's, re- it's not as good. Yeah, I've never... Yeah, it's it works and it's still coffee, but I've it ain't never, good stuff like that. Yeah, man, how's that chair treating you over there? I love it. I got a I got a secret for you. What is it? Not many people know this. Uh-oh. That chair <laughs> came from Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. What? <clears throat> Circa around nineteen seventy nine, nineteen eighty, eighty one, somewhere in there. My my mom and dad, when they were in school at Tuscaloosa, worked. I think dad worked. Well, mom was on the volleyball team. Hmm. So they were involved in athletic something. Mm -hmm. And so I think dad worked at the Coliseum at some point. I don't know. But we had, growing up, we had like two or three of those chairs. Really? um, I'm pretty sure it was illegal for for him to (laughs) have had possession of. But But it's neat, though. I mean, like. That's a great chair, man. That's That's made it. What is it? It's 2017. It's made it 36 years, 37 years. That's a long time. Yeah. That's almost as long as I've made it. That's uh, that's how long my parents have been married about. So wow, that's that pretty is. cool, man. That is a cool story. That's neat. They don't even have these chairs and these things anymore. You can't steal those things. Yeah, I don't know if those were sitting. I think those were like the probably the players' chairs floor or something. Seats. Yeah, floor seats yeah. are along there. Yeah. How did you How did you park outside? Am I gonna have to go take a picture and tweet it and <laughs> do the Adam Hood? Oh uh, no, I, my parking is impeccable. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that cracks me up so bad. <laughs> no. I now every time I drive through a parking lot, I look around and if I see a bad parking job, I think oh, I'm gonna take a picture of that instead of that. I know. Do, do you? I, yeah, I, I get know. from I get some from you every once in a while. Yeah. I get them from a lot of people. If, if I, I had a buddy that well, um, my wife's one of her best friends' husband sent me one the other day, and it was like a Prius, like completely <laughs> double parked. He was like kind of an empty parking lot, but wonder, nonetheless. What are those people? <laughs> what are you thinking when you just? Just you're not thinking when you just pull in a parking space sideways, taking up two or three spots, and you just think, "Yep, this is it. All right, let's <laughs> yeah, go inside." I'll know it. It's funny you say that because um, I had this 
my father-in-law double parked once and we were going out to eat and i said i said look at that look at <laughs> he said i don't want nobody hitting my truck <laughs> well you I mean, know that's, one, that's, that's justifiable you know yeah. <laughs> i thought well i guess i stand corrected but i'm still gonna take a picture of it <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm still gonna show people this is not how you do it that's right whether you have justifiable reason or not yeah it kind of turned into its own little thing for a little while there and anybody else send you Send you stuff? Oh, I, I mean, I get them all the time. Yeah? Yeah, and I mean, you know, the baby pictures have kind of taken over everything. Right, now. right. How's, how's that going? How's Ooh, the man. Girl? Parenthood. Wow. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> this is round, round two for round you. Round two. I got, my oldest is, uh, she, she graduates this year. So, mm. that's it. That's and, a span. That's until, it. <laughs> until the new one. <laughs> the crap, man. So, how's, what's the, what's the youngest one's name? It's the youngest one's name's Drew. Ba- the Drew, baby's right. name's Drew. The yeah. oldest is Ashlyn. Now I've seen Drew in Auburn and Alabama clothes. What's the deal yeah. with that? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's really tough, you know. And my, well, you know, and I, okay, I, to 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 my credit, my wife's the one that dresses her in, in the Auburn stuff too, because she tries to be diplomatic, and that's oh, okay. really sweet of her. Because well, my yeah, wife's a grant, nice. you know, she graduated from Alabama. Yeah, and so I don't really have a dog. I mean, I I just went, you know, I'm just from Opelika. I didn't go to school at Auburn, right? You know, but um. But so, I don't know. It's really, man, it's a really hard thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially in Alabama. You, know, I mean, you gotta. It's really hard because people give me a hard time about it, you know? I mean, oh, I'm sure. Like, I'm joking, but there's a lot of people that they're are They're serious. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like a religion. It's like you bringing them up and you point them in the direction you feel like they're supposed to go. Mm-hmm. But, you know, sometimes it is those Alabama families that have the, the daughter that turns Auburn or vice versa. Right. It's, it's tough. It's tough. You're and the you're, you're same thing again. Not to, not to pick on my in laws too much, but my they say, well, you know, you, you have to, uh, you have to join the winners. You have to be a part of the winners. And, <laughs> I mean, you know, and the way Auburn's played the past couple of years, I, I can't argue with that. We've been the losers. Well, Sorry, you know, it's, it's somebody's like got to do something. It's like anything else, it happens in cycles and, <laughs> That's and right. waves and circles and. So Opelika, is that what were you were born? Hometown, born and raised. Born and raised. That's how far is that from Auburn? Right next to each other. Okay. But if you if you go up Opelika Road and right where the Crystals is, that's where the that's where the. the I've only been down there are. a couple of times. Uh, my dad didn't want me to spend money in that town. So <laughs> is that right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I've I've heard him say that a couple of times, but I think he was mostly joking. <laughs> that's pretty funny. We went over in when I was at Tuscaloosa a few times. Mm-hmm. We drive down, stay for a weekend or something. Oh, it's strange how it's one of those things where the college and this is this has always been this way for me. And, you know, I've been I've been playing. Gosh, I'll be 42 in in July and I've been playing, making a living. Well, I'm sorry, getting paid to do it since I was 16 in in Auburn and Opelika, you know, so a long time. And it's always been if I'm doing better in Opelika or if I'm doing better in Auburn, I'm doing nothing in Alabama. Yeah. And or in Tuscaloosa. And. Same thing. If I'm if I've got gigs and doing well in Tuscaloosa, nobody comes to see me in Auburn. Really? And it's it's it, I'm, it's not an intentional thing. It's strictly coincidental, but it hmm. works that way. I mean, you know, because we live in Northport, we've been there for four years, and I don't I don't play. I mean, I don't. I've got probably. Well, I mean, you know, I've played the Wheelhouse, yeah, but I've only played there once, you right? Know? And then there, there's a place called <clears throat> the Southern Ale House, and I think we've talked about that place before. I've heard you mention, yeah, it, yeah. it's an and this it's an earlier thing, like it's like a six. Yeah, it's the restaurant, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. You told me so, about that, and they're great people, you know, but they, it's it's not like a ten o'clock show. Well, you're not playing around Alabama much. I mean, not a whole lot at no, all. Most not a whole lot. A Texas man these days. Strangely enough, yeah, yeah. I was a, last few times I've looked on your website, it's been. All Texas, ninety percent, ninety five percent Texas. Is yeah. that is that just where you get the best reaction from? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, is. I know you've had some some Texas music chart success and stuff out there. I think I have. I was yeah. reading about you on the Wikipedia the other day. Oh, interesting. Is that yeah. what it says? It, it, that, that's what it says. I sent a screenshot to my man, Mr. Justin Johnson, uh-huh. and he's even really in there love that in, stuff, the, didn't he? in the credits of <laughs> like your albums, your discography. I think it was the second or third. EP yeah, the, the Sixth Street EP. Yeah, yeah. He says like, recording it, Justin Johnson. So I yeah. sent a screenshot to him. I said, "Man, you're famous. You're on the Wikipedia." He's gonna want money now. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna say, "Well, I got need another percentage." <laughs> yeah, I was reading on there. No, I I saw where you did a 
so I think it was like a PBS story re- interview with you or something a Who while did? back. I don't know. I Googled you. I did a little Adam Hood research. Interesting. Yesterday. Okay. Interesting. And there's a story on you at PBS.com or something. Interesting. Yeah. They had quotes really? for they had quotes from you, so I guess that means that you talked to them. What was it about? It was about songwriting and talking you mentioned about songwriting and how you like you're to the point in your career to where you would you're happy doing the songwriting thing mm-hmm. and still playing shows but not chasing the the artist thing because you've seen or as much, you know, as before. That's what the story said anyway. I'm not putting words in my mouth. What, 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 am I that old? I mean, <laughs> that's what wow, the story I says. Was, I didn't know it was PBS. Interesting. Wow, that's it, interesting. We, let's see. Let's, let's pull it up here. Yeah, let's talk about this. I want to. I want to know what you found out when you Googled. Yeah. All right. We'll just my do wife this. does it all the time, but she's. It's usually for make sure I'm where I'm where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> that's not true. Welcome at all. to 2017, people. We're talking to you on this podcast, and I'm also Googling. Adam Hood. As that is speak. a verb that did not exist 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. How about that? I wonder if it existed five. Yeah, probably. In the past 10 yeah. years, I would say. But true Googling. I think I Googled Adam Hood's songwriter. Yes, of course you did. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's see. American songwriter. I think it was PBS. Let me see here. Where do you see American songwriter? It was PBS. American songwriter right there. The shape of things. You're kidding me. <laughs> you don't ever Google yourself? No, of course not. I don't I don't remember the last time I Googled myself either. Look at that. How about that? How many stars did they give me? Three and a half? No. But anyway, so the songwriting well, you're you're a badass at it. So I believe you. you. No. <laughs> Speaking of songwriting, I'm sure uh, it was the uh, Miranda anyway. Lambert CD that just came out. What song was it that was on that? I didn't. It was uh, Good Old Days. I haven't listened to it. Sorry. It's really good. I yeah. will say that it's it's a double album, and so um, it, aside from the fact that I participated in it, right? <laughs> it that take that away. Helps. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But uh, it's a really good record. I mean, and to me, the production on it's way different than she's done. And yeah. it's like I said, there's 24 songs on it, and they're you know they're they're really different, really good. Who I mean, wrote, really good. Wrote, what's so? What was the song that you wrote? I wrote "Good Old Days." It was a uh, track two on disc two. So Brent Cobb and Miranda and I wrote that. Oh, song. That's, that's a good little trio. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, Brent's doing really well. Oh, Brent, he they just left out today to play. I don't know. They're playing somewhere tonight and tomorrow night. And I think they're there. in Birmingham tonight, aren't they? Let's Sound Google right. it. Google it. Yeah, I think so. Chance had the van and trailer here this morning. Oh, really? Well, Chance Gray from Fife, Alabama. Yeah, he, Fife, he had, Alabama. The dadgum, that's the uh, UFO cap. <laughs> how, how do we do? We talk about this all the time. I heard that somebody was talking about that, and that is still a legitimate thing. They have UFO days, a festival <laughs> where they celebrate. That they saw UFOs. I'm not. We're going to get out and celebrate it. We've seen a bunch of them. No, no offense, people. If you think you saw it, you're welcome to think that as much as you want. <laughs> mm. I guess they think that more in Fife, though. Okay, let's see. Brent Cobb days. Yes, they're playing at Saturn in Birmingham tonight. Ooh. That's awesome. That's, <clears throat> that's a cool place. I would tell the people to go see him, but you're not going to hear this today. So. Yeah, they're playing <laughs> with whatever random night that is. Check him out, Brent Cobb. <laughs> I think it's Brent Cobb music or something like that, but I'll put him in the show notes. That's the second time he's been in the show notes. I got to stop talking about Brent Cobb. Who else talked about him? <laughs> uh, Chance and I. Spoke oh, that's about right. You just said yeah. that. Where did I meet him? Um, I actually uh, was the first guy that he co wrote with when he went when he came to Carnival. So he had, okay. He had just got to town from L.A., and I think he said he was working at Walgreens or something like that. So we it was the first time we ever wrote together was his first co-write. And uh, he's from that Richland, Ellaville area. That's that's really close to Opelika. Like, there was a there was a place in America it's called Pat's Place that I used to play at all the time. Old and, America's. <laughs> Old America's, yeah, yeah. Georgia. I'm sure you played there before, haven't you? I've never been to America's, but I've really? heard, um, I know, you know, Brent, is that where he's from? Or is it just the, air, that the area? area. Some, yeah. yeah. Did you know, you never know Adam Fisher? Is he the guy that makes guitar straps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know who he is. I think we've met before. I think I met Brent at his apartment within six months or a year of me moving here. So that would have been 2009. So how do you know Adam? Adam and I both played at Big Shots downtown on 2nd Avenue. I played there from like summer of 09 till like 2012. Hmm. Mid, well, I guess 2012, 2013, somewhere in there. I kind of phased 
phase myself out of the downtown scene. Yeah. Like at the end of 2011, I started recording my first CD and put that out at the beginning of 2012. Started playing on the road little by little, mm. less and less in town. Called it the record fade. <laughs> downtown record fade. <laughs> to where at some point somebody was like, Jacob, where you been? You know? Uh, you, see, you didn't even know I was gone. So how long have you been here? How long have you been in Nashville? I graduated from the University of Alabama in May of 2009 and okay. then moved here a month later. Oh, okay. So coming up on eight years. Wow. How about that? It's a stretch. That is a stretch. <clears throat> good it's for good, you, buddy. It's good, man. I, I love it. I, I almost moved to Austin a couple of years ago, about two or three years ago. And, yeah. And I still may live there someday. I love Austin. Half my family's in Texas. Yeah. Um, all my mom's side. But Nashville is such a great place to be based out of mm-hmm. so, I mean not just because of the business side I mean that definitely helps but if I want to play a show in Chicago or Shreveport or Savannah Georgia you know it's all roughly an equal distance from here whereas if I'm living in Austin and I want to play a show in Atlanta that's a pain in you the got ass a long way you know, drive. that's a long drive so yeah. that was kind of the biggest reason and my mom and dad and sister and niece and nephew and everybody is like two and a half hours from here yeah. in Fort Bay. So. Closer to home, the better. I agree. Right. Well, that's what's kept us from moving to Texas, too. I mean, the, the, well, strictly family more than yeah. anything, you know. I mean, like, I always, my 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 plan has always been, you know, let the oldest one get out of high school, which is, you know, we're almost there. And mm-hmm. we talk about it, you know, okay, are we going to stay in Tuscaloosa? Are we going to go to Texas? Are we going right, to go to Nashville? What out. are we going to do? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I still don't. You know, I mean, you you think I, I, I would think that at this time period, I would have had my mind made up. Yeah. But I mean, if it's up to me, I'd, I'd stay put, you know. Seems to be a going thing in life. You, you'd think that when you I always thought when I've got a line in a song that says uh, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but something about I always figured by now. I'd have figured out where I wanted to be or what I wanted to be doing or to have it all together. Yeah. That's what, yeah have it all get it all together by now. But you know, it's so much for thinking what you, you know, predicting what you know. That's really kind of all, what you learn is the fact that, you know, I really don't have any of this together. <laughs> you know, I was, the older you get, the more you realize, Oh wow, man, I, I, I thought I'd have this together. And I just realized I don't have anything. To, I had, <laughs> I realized how little I do have together. That came up when I was, uh, <clears throat> Another when I was talking with Chance, we were talking about thinking, you know, when you're 21, you think you know what's going on, and when you're 26, you're like, man, I didn't know shit. And then when you're 30, you think, oh, when I was 26, I, really I didn't, didn't know, know shit. shit. Yeah. yeah, and it keeps going. And I was talking to Dad and about that one day, and Dad said, yeah, he said I'm over 50, and I still don't know what's going on half the time. Right, that's right. <laughs> so you just kind of get more used to it as you get older. It's funny that it's a man thing too. My wife, I, 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 I think I. Pass out the day that my wife said it. You know what? I just don't know what's going on. I think, <laughs> yeah, Lee, something's wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like women just don't they they don't they don't think like that. They got their they got their shit together. Sexist Adam Hood. <laughs> it's good. I gotta give, give them praise, numbers. right? No, yeah, women are great. I I love women. <laughs> they think they got all their act together. <laughs> Shows what I know. Oh man. <laughs> That's funny. So when did you start playing music? You said you started playing. You said you started getting paid when you were 16. Yeah. What was your first instrument? Uh, guitar. Well, no, I played drums. I played drums in junior high for a little while. And then my parents. I said in, I said instrument. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Musical <laughs> instrument. Drummer no, jokes. I'm just kidding. I yeah, love drum it. Drum jokes. I'm just kidding. Oh, I, played, uh, I played percussion in sixth grade band. So. Did you really? Yeah. Did you play, did, what, did you play drums? Like, I no, guess I we was, a, well, I started off on... You know, we all got the little recorder things. For yeah, us. so and then you move from that, and you get to pick an actual instrument. And I wanted the saxophone, but so did everybody else. So he everybody to, wants the saxophone. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yes. So he had to assign us an instrument, and I got the trombone. Which at the time I was like, man, but I ended up really enjoying it, and it was cool. So I did that for a few months, and then we brought in. They brought in the percussion. Mm-hmm. And a few choice people that were doing well enough at their instrument, if they wanted to, could move to percussion. So I moved on. And we had, at that time, you know, if you had the flute, you had a little case or your horn or whatever, it wasn't a big deal. But the percussion players had to have a snare drum. Yeah. And was it a xylophone? Is that what they're yeah, called? Yeah, it was like a package. Yeah, it was a Ludwig, Ludwig snare and, and a little... Yeah. A yeah, it was a backpack thing. It was called something. It wasn't a xylophone. It's called something. Yeah. 
Cause anyway, the, it was heavy <laughs> as shit. It was and, heavy. And so <laughs> I carried funny, that thing man. for a while. But we, what that what they would do is in the when you're looking at the band in the back right area it's where the percussion was, and they'd have a big bass drum and mm-hmm. cymbals and the percussion, you know, the small percussion instruments, and right. we'd all kind of swap up for right. each song. So that was cool. But then football came along, and I was like, all right, see you, band. My People, same story. You know. Yeah. Exactly the same thing. And the cool thing, well, and the, what's even better was I played football until I, and, well, so to answer your question, about 14, I started playing in the youth group. And so no. I was playing guitar then, though. And so, uh, let's see, so junior high, what, that was 12, by like ninth grade, 10th grade, I was playing, doing stuff like, with leading worship and stuff like yeah, that, you know, for cool. a 14-year-old. And then <clears throat> there was a place called the Breezeway in Opelika, and they had music on Friday and Saturday nights, and it was... Um, when I started, when I kind of got interested in playing there, it was a guy named Mark True, who I guess he still lives in Opelika. He wrote that uh, Crystal Gale song. Well, have you left the one you loved before? I see how I that sound. I think I know what you're talking about. It's a, it's, yeah. it, he wrote that song. And uh, I don't know I don't know if, if he wrote anything else. I don't know. That's, yeah. But that was, that was his. Back then, I guess that was enough, you know. But so there was Mark and then Brad Cotter played there and and uh, that was really it. And so um, I played there one Friday and Saturday night a month. They gave me one hundred fifty dollars for the weekend and I, I quit the football team. I said, yeah. you, you, nobody's paying me right? to do this, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Man. And so 16. I had my own money and, you know, a cheap car. Yeah, one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, that's what I mean, we're getting paid now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> you were 16. What was that in the 30s? Yes, it was. Oh. It was. It was. It was actually a uh, fifty-two. <laughs> right no, after the no. war, right before I'm, Korea. It is ridiculous, people. Just if if you're listening and you're wondering about all the money that we make as musicians, I don't mean to be complaining. I love playing music, and I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love yeah. doing it. But it's the only career that I know of that is people are still getting paid the same dollar amount that they were getting paid thirty <laughs> yeah. years ago. That's, that's true. It's crazy. Anyway, it's crazy. And, and less, anymore. you know, it, I mean, just, it depends and, on what yeah, town, yeah. you know, some, yeah. Some people here in Nashville, they're like, yo, we'll give you $30 Show- for four hours. No breaks. It's a showcase. That? It's a showcase. It's <clears throat> exposure. Yeah, ex- yeah. Exposure. It's all about that exposure. <laughs> yeah. I feel, I feel exposed. All right. I feel like I've gotten some <laughs> exposure. <laughs> yeah. So how you, so you were 14, 15 when you quit? Yes. Football? Yeah. That was well. That was sixteen. That was I. I just got so, my okay. driver's well, license. Okay, yeah. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And so I did that for a while, and that kind of led to fraternity parties and things like that. And got did you ever out. have a? Did you do the band thing? Or? I didn't do the band stuff till I started going to Texas. Really. I yeah. mean, so I was by myself a long oh, cool. time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love people ask me all the time. They're like, "What well, do you rather? <clears throat> do you enjoy the the you know acoustic stuff or the band stuff?" And the answer is yes. Absolutely, me too, I mean, man. I know they're both. Like, I'll do the acoustic thing for you know a few weeks, and then I'll be like, man, I'm ready to plug in and and turn up. And yeah. then you do that for a few weeks, and you're like, all right, man, I'm ready for an intimate you know acoustic show again. <laughs> so I don't want one without the other. I agree. Yeah. Well, and I, I've gotten to the point now to where I, I I don't want the separation enough to where I just I, I play my Telecaster with like we just play solo electric shows basically. You know, yeah, what I've I mean? seen you do that a few yeah. times. I think the the first time. Well, the first time I met you, you probably don't even remember. It I probably was, don't. <laughs> it was at the basement here in town, mm-hmm. 2012. Oh wow! At some point, and I was dating a girl, and she was a big Adam Hood fan. So mm-hmm. we went, and I'd never really, I'd heard you some in, in college sure. and stuff, but yeah. Um, but she wanted, so we went to see you, and I think we sat like right up front or something. And uh-huh. I don't know if you were doing a band thing or solo. I'm not sure, but I think I met you that night just in passing. But then. I think 2014 or 2015, I was in Texas and played Billy's and opened yeah. for you and ran PA system. Of course, I, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, that was the first time I. <laughs> I always remember that was the first time I ever spent any kind of time around you where you weren't performing. Uh huh. <laughs> and because we both stayed at Alley and Jordan York's yes, house. Yeah. yeah. And that night, you know, we did, you know, whatever we sat around. Had some people over, sat around, picked and stuff. But the next day, I remember you. I was working on the computer or something, and you came like sliding out of the bedroom like Tom Cruise in your like socks and shorts. <laughs> and I don't remember. You just did a bunch of goofy shit. And I, was, I remember thinking to myself, "Well, he's goofy as hell." I mean, first thing in the morning, look at that fool. 
What's wrong with him? <laughs> Story of my life. Uh, <laughs> man, really also, funny, man. on uh, on Wikipedia, mm-hmm. when I was reading about you know Adam Hood and mm-hmm. all of his yes, all yes. of his excitement, yes, yes. Did did you go on the road with Leon Russell? I was on the road with Leon for three years. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. I would like to hear all about that. Oh man, I got how did that all start? Kinds of how stories. did that come about? Okay, I have um, my friend Zach Baker, who is from Jasper. He lives in Jasper now. So Zach moved to Austin. Um, the band Vallejo, those mm-hmm. guys. Okay, yeah, yeah. you know they're kind of all from Birmingham. I heard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so Zach, I don't know they're from Birmingham. Yeah, I think that's kind I of played. Okay, that makes a lot of sense because. I know a guy from Austin that had heard of Vallejo out there. Yeah. But I played a little bar in Jasper one time, and this guy came up. He was like, man, I used to play saxophone Vallejo or something. Really? And I was like, okay. I didn't know. At that yeah. time, I didn't know who it was. My my guitar player from Austin was like, I've heard of him. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, sorry. Yeah. That, well, and that's the thing. You know, I mean, they were pretty... Yeah, pretty successful as an Austin band, yeah. but uh, but you know they all kind of credit Birmingham as being born in there and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So anyway, so Zach moved to Austin first, um, to and he was kind of in that group. And so when uh, I I guess the band that he was in, I think it, they, I don't know if they broke up. I don't remember what what happened, but he he got a he went to work for a booking agency that had Leon. Mm-hmm. And so when Leon. Basically, Zach started the a, he started his own agency and took Leon with him. And so he called me. And he said, "He said I um, I started my own booking agency. I, I, Leon Russell's my client. I want to put you on every show I can." And so for three years, I mean, I was I I, I guess probably the second year, I probably did about two hundred fifty shows with him. I did. I mean, whoa, that guy played constantly, man. And wow. Yeah. I mean, they. What they, year was that? This was. This was probably uh, 2007, 2008, somewhere like that. So about 10 years ago. Man. Yeah. And so, you know, it was me by myself or usually me and Patrick Lunsford, my drummer. You know, Mm -hmm. that was when we were just a two piece. And I mean, I played, I played everywhere. I mean, I played, we opened for him at BB King's. We played the whiskey opening for him. I played the Malibu Inn. I I mean, my first green hall show was, was with him. And I'm um, just so everywhere I, I, I mean, and I was, so that was what, well, that was that long ago. I was kind of young, you know, yeah. it was earlier than that. 2005, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But, um, Leon Russell, That's this was so the cool. first time I had ever really crossed the Mississippi river, you know? And I mean, I, I just, so I, you, before I'd never, that you were just Southeast. I'd never been to St. Louis, you yeah. know, I, I, I was in, I was out, in, in fact, around this time was when I was making the different groove records. So that mm-hmm. was that was officially the first time I was in California. But I was out, I mean, that, you know, the, between the record and Leon, the thing is, like, out there, that was really the meat of his crowd. I mean, you know, if you wanted to go see a lot of people come see Leon Russell, you'd go see him. Like, we played the Belly Up in, a, in, in, uh, in uh, San Diego, and, I mean, the, Bo Derek was there. You know, yeah. John Corbett was there, and you know, and so, you know, these the, the movie stars came out to see the guy. Yeah, there, you know, and uh, so Man. it was, it was really, it was really a lot of good experience. It was probably the the poorest I've ever been. You know, just because same thing, like you said. I mean, you know, we weren't making, I wasn't making any money, and yeah. and any uh, any dime that I made. I spent on getting to the gig. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it goes right back in. I mean, man, I, I I remember it, and it was one of those things where, you know, it was. I remember I played somewhere. It was like in Indiana or something. I was scheduled to play, and uh, I mean, I drove to the gig, and they were like, "We don't know anything about you being here, man." And <laughs> I've so, had that happen before. Yeah, and I went right. home. And I've then, had that happen with you playing opening with you. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> look, look at there. That happened. I don't. Everybody's yeah. got their hands up in the air. Oh, yeah. You know? But so they turned me out. I mean, they, you know. They didn't do anything about it. They no, said, sorry. Sorry, yeah. we don't know. And so then two weeks later, I got an, I got a, a letter in the mail at my house. And and some, whoever it was, had had written me a letter about, we drove to come see you play and you weren't there. And I don't know who Leon Russell is. And here are your, <laughs> here are your tickets. I hope they're listening to your podcast. Yeah. Uh, you know. I don't know who Leon Russell is. Yeah. Really. And how did you get my address to my home, <laughs> So anyway, I, well, I'm sure it was on my website back then, but, uh, so it was, it was things like that, you know, I mean, it, it was, but some, some shows were great and, and I, I made a lot of friends and I, man, I put so a did lot you get to spend of, much time with Leon. I never shook his hand. Really? Mm-hmm. Never. 
Was he just not around? Yeah, he's he just, just kind of an introverted guy. Yeah, you know, I, can I see mean, that. And if you weren't probably he's taught, I mean, I'm sure he was to the point where if you weren't already in with him and already close to him, he just yeah. was like, I'm not looking for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, pretty much. I think it was, <clears throat> I, you know, just things like, like interviews and stuff like that just really wasn't, yeah. wasn't the point to him. And he, you know, really wasn't in all that great of health. You know, I mean, he, I don't, I guess he had some, some, some form of degenerative brain disease or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that. so he, he kind of, it was hard for him got to get to, around and stuff. But like you still that. got to see him perform. Oh, every night. Every, yeah. 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 Every night. That's awesome. Yeah. It was great. I mean, probably I never knew that much about life. him probably until like college sometime. Mm-hmm. Sometime in college, I found <clears throat> there used to be some old videos on YouTube of, and this was like, not long after YouTube came out, so it was mm-hmm. like probably 07, 08, 09, somewhere in there. There were old YouTube videos from the 1974 Willie Nelson 4th of July picnic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and man. And it was Willie, Waylon, Leon Russell, Ray Wiley Hubbard, like Doug Kershaw, mm-hmm. and just like a handful, just, it was heyday. I mean, they were all probably high and drunk. <laughs> yeah. Leon was emceeing, quote unquote, <laughs> but... <clears throat> he sang a couple of songs. Half the time he was just on stage, drunk, walking around with his shirt unbuttoned yeah. while everybody else was singing. I remember seeing that, yeah, the MC. And that was my first, ex- like, watching or hearing him sing or anything. And then, of course, that led me to research more on him. And then you find out, you know, it's all the Joe Cocker stuff and the everything he'd done. And a few years ago, I was watching when he, at some point when he got inducted, I forgot when it was, when he was inducted in the Hall of <clears throat> Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. And Elton John did the intro or whatever. Have you ever watched that? No, I haven't. Oh, it's so good. Really? Yeah, he talks about what the effect that Leon <clears throat> Russell had on him and yeah. how he helped him early in his career. And then later on, when Leon's health was bad and he had almost disappeared from p- the public eye, mm-hmm. Elton like almost made like kept bugging him about coming out on the road with him and kind of got him out of the house. And back into playing and stuff. So he went through all that. But then he also went through some of the history of the albums that Leon had played on. And it's unbelievable, he, man. He played keys on every Beach Boys album yeah. that, that it was ever recorded. Yeah. And then, you know, a hundred other things. That's, he was so good. Yeah, it's just amazing. The Song it's, For You is one of my favorite songs of all time ever yeah, written. I think so, too. And I, I think I think there's a lot of people that would say that, you know, that, yeah. that probably just one of the... I mean, you know, it it kind of goes without saying this stuff is well written, you know, because it, it just kind of comes from outer space, you know, as far as like like his writing style. But mm. just I don't know, it's just a it's just a real depth the, to it, what he does. Yeah, like the chord structures. Yeah, it's really the, signature. Yeah, you can you can tell when it's him playing too, you know, and a yeah, lot on like the Mad Dogs and Englishmen, um, the Joe Cocker mm-hmm. album thing. When you're listening to it, you can tell when it's him playing the piano. Or when the other piano player's playing and he's right. playing guitar, you can tell because of the chords and stuff that he's yeah. playing. Really so, interesting. Yeah. Who else have you played with on the road I, that I didn't know that I don't know about? <laughs> some stuff. Tell some Good people question. about uh, old Adam Hood. Oh man, you know I man I toured. Just being on the road is well, you know. I mean, that's really kind of how you get out there and you 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 get a name for yourself. You go open for people. It's the best way. Then I know how to do it. That's what I'm working on. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's what I've been doing for four or five years. And I feel like there's other ways to do it. Yeah. But that, to me, is the most proven proven way. Yeah. You know? Well, and it's cool to be able to do it now, you know, and because it, it and it's kind of been my plan to sort of be a guy that 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 writes songs for and with people and, and can go out and be their support act. You know, I mean, I, and I hate to say this and I, I, maybe I sell myself short, but I just never wanted to be a headliner, you know, I mean, maybe I did when I was 17, but you know, I heard, you know, when I, I wanted to be Garth Brooks until I heard John Hyatt. When I heard John Hyatt, I said, Oh, I don't want to be Garth Brooks anymore. I want to be John Hyatt. Yeah. And so, you know, that's kind of really changed my, my way of thinking from my teenage years, you know, on to now. I can totally and, see that. Yeah, and, and that to me is just, you know, that that makes sense to me, you know? I mean, because if if I've I've seen how hard it is to to be the middle and the, the, the front man or front woman in, mm-hmm. in something that's as large a scale as as country music or pop music is, and I just don't know that I could do that and still ha- and still be a, a, a good dad. Yeah. And some people can. You know, I mean, it's obvious that some people can. 
I don't know that I could. Yeah. You know, it just it. Well, I, that takes it takes a, a big, quote unquote, big man, whatever, right. uh, to realize that and to right. address that and put that into your life. I mean, there's a lot of people that would keep doing it because oh, I want it for me, right? And not think about how it affects family and yeah. Well, thank and you. Everything else. Man. When I was, That's you awesome. know, my parents. That that was kind of how my dad was. I mean, you know, there were there were things that that I'm sure he. There were things I know that 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 he could have accomplished that he didn't because of the because of, of he had mm-hmm. family, you know, and yeah. and so you know I just kind of and you know not to say just not just not just the kids. I mean, you know, it's my wife too. I mean, I want to be a good husband too, you know. And That's so awesome. that says a lot about you, man. Well, That's, thank yeah. you. I know, my I feel the same way about my dad. I mean, he's. For my our my sister and my whole life, he's just him and my mom both have you know worked to no end. My dad at one point had two or three jobs mm-hmm. when we were little. At one point, dad had two jobs. One of them was third shift. He would come home from third shift, you know, and it's like six or seven a.m. Shower, go work another job during the day, maybe come home and take a little nap, and then coach both my sister and my little league team <laughs> yeah. and then maybe go take another nap and then go back to work. First shift. <laughs> and I think that was uh, mom. He and mom say that. I think that was the only year he ever forgot mom's birthday because he was <laughs> in the tornado of, yeah. of life. But yeah, I mean, I think that's what, that's what great men do. You know? That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's what the priority should be, you know, but that's, I mean, also I think that's part of life is, you know, when you, especially when you're chasing, when you're going after a passion or doing things for what you're passionate about, mm-hmm. it changes, you know, as right. you go down the line. Like at one point, you know, same thing with me, you know, at one point I would have, you know, one of my goals was to be super rich and famous and, and whatever, you know, that's when you yeah. start out, that's a lot of people's goal. Everybody's, but, yeah. You know, now to me, for what, you know, it's when it comes to music and songwriter and artist side of things. Top of the mountain to me is like Jason Isbell. Mm-hmm. Like if you sell out theaters, do everything on your 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 own way and on your own label and stuff. Right. Like to me, that's the top. If I made it to that point, yeah, I could be like, you know, cool. But yeah, you know, there's so many things along the line. Who knows? Who's to say in five years what you know what I might be doing or what might be the top of the mountain at that point. Yeah, so. I know. And I think about that too. Cause I, I mean, I'm a, I'm the same way you are. I mean, I think, I think, man, you know, I mean, this was career has been great and, but you know, it, it's one, it's, and especially kind of being from Alabama, you sort of have to go, all right, well, I really appreciate this and really admire it. I can't follow it. Yeah, you know what no, I mean? Yeah. Because, it, and so, and so you, so then the question is, well, where do I go from here? So what you got coming up? What's what's on the horizon for for Mr. Hood? I gotta make a record this year. Yeah. Um <clears throat> that's really that's really that's it. I gotta I gotta of course, you know, in the record I gotta keep writing. Um, mm-hmm. it's a new year, I've got new management and oh man, you know. You know I what gotta, you're gonna record? I don't. Yeah. I don't. Um I I've I I, I haven't I mean I've I kinda I don't know. it's it's enough where I really don't even want to you know, like I've talked to Dave Cobb about it, but you know, you say that name. Oh yeah. You know, and I mean, he, he, that's, he's King Midas right now. That's right, so exactly. He gets calls and emails and texts and oh man, all well, kinds of things. Well, and so you know, I work for him, and, right. and 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 so you know, but but it's I work for him as a writer, mm-hmm. and it's really cool because you know, I mean, I the I'm. It's it's nice to be able to be up here and for him to say, "Hey man, I'm working on this movie." Hey man, so and so's in the studio. What have you got? Mm-hmm. And he, sometimes he picks things and sometimes he doesn't, you know. And right. and, and it, it is what it is, part of being a songwriter. But, um, you know, so I've in my relationship with him, you know, we've we've talked about working together before, and then the publishing di- kind of thing came up. He said, "You know, I want to start my own publishing company. What are you doing?" And I said, "I'm not doing anything." He said, "Come right for me." I said, "You got it." And so that's that's kind of what we've been doing for the past yeah. year. And, you know, in a new year, so, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, all right, I need to make a record, you know. And there's that's kind of where we're at right now. So I've yeah. got options. And the, the good news, and I say I've got options, I've got ideas. Yeah. And the good news is, at least I, regardless of, of, of who and where we make it, I know I know the record I want to make. Mm-hmm. And um, that's that's pretty exciting. I mean, honestly. That is, that's good. I mean, that's you know, it's more than some people can say. They're well, I mean, like, hey. it may be the first time I've ever been able to say that. Yeah. You know, because I'm. And you, so you got like a sound, a note, like, you know, the 
angle you want to take at it or whatever. We've always been a three piece. You yeah. know, I mean, at, at, at most, I'm a four piece. And, yeah. And but it, pretty much, usually, you go see me. It's a three piece. And and the the biggest, I think, it's been a hindrance is the fact that that if you associate yourself with the record. The, the show doesn't sound like the record. Mm-hmm. And if you associate yourself with the show, the record don't sound like the show. I totally You know what I mean? And, Absolutely. And, and, you know, I don't think, you know, most of us don't really think that much about it. But at the same time, subconsciously, it bothers people. I know it yeah. does. And I can, and I think it's one of those things where it's always these they guys. They might or might not even know it. It's like, yeah. You said, yeah. There's just something inside them. Somewhere like, well, it goes, not, this is well, great, exactly. but. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I want to take that, I want to remove <clears throat> that but. And, and that's the only way I know to do it because I just, you know, I, I don't have time and and money and space to have a seven piece band. Mm-hmm. And oh, I don't yeah. have time and money and space to record a seven piece band either, Steve. Well, I understand you know? that. I and, understand that. And and which when it's and I don't want to say when it's not necessary because it is. Sometimes arrangements are, you know, the song needs a piano yeah, part. It depends it greatly depends on the song. It's but all that's that, what it's yeah. based on, the song, you know. Yeah. And and you know, typically we went in the first couple of records were just records, just trying to, man, just trying to get my name out there. Mm-hmm. But when, when we did The Shape of Things, you know, The Shape of Things was sort of, it was, it was basically. Is that the one with like Front Porch Thing, yeah. Grandpa's Farm? That was a song, that was, a, it was a, a record out of a pile of demos. Yeah. And so these were four production demos. These were things that, you know, we were trying to get songs cut. Uh-huh. And coincidentally, it worked because, you know, uh, that song, Front Porch Sings on yeah. there. And then, uh, what else? Uh, the Little Big Towns, they do that? They did that one. Yeah. And I wrote it with Stapleton. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. I forgot about that. Yep. And then uh, we uh, Grandpa's Farm He's was on there. Okay He's doing okay now. doing okay. I mean... Dave said that that record sold. The only record that sold more is is Adele. Like it's Adele and then the Traveler. Stapled, yeah, cool. <laughs> I think he said over two million copies. Can you believe that? Man, I like people when people say that he just came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Just, I love it. Yeah, just overnight. It just moved to town, and then he's just look. He said, "Man, I tell you what, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do. Put this album out. We're gonna move to Nashville and be a star." <laughs> I know. Never mind the hundred and something, you know, cuts that he'd had. I mean, years, that man. That guy's yeah. been around for years, and it, 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 it's the epitome of it. Just goes to show you, you know, that that it's it's a great thing to be able to see things on this side of the curtain because mm. it, it does two things. To me, it does two things. It makes me feel like, well, there is a practicality to this. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's not you. I can still be a dreamer. And still treat this like a career. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, for sure. But at the same time, you know, it. some of it kind of takes the dream away from it. You, you, you know what I'm it's, saying? Yeah, it's like I was saying earlier about, I was talking about podcasting, but it's like anything. It's never quite what you what you think it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. There's always some layers beneath it. But I feel like if the if the passion is there and if the, the love of the music or the, you know, whatever the art is, if that's there, then you figure out, you know, your way, yeah, your path, your and way that's with it. any job, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, and that's the thing, you know, I, I, I try to look at it like that, you know, it, it, it's no different from anything anybody else is doing. It takes, it takes some work, you know, and, and so, you know, but, but that's the, in, instead of, and I, I think that's kind of been the thing with me. It's, it's learning how to take those, those things and make them a positive, you know, which is, yeah, you know, I, I guess that's that's kind of part of life in general, <laughs> isn't it? To take well, your negatives and make them a positive. A lot of, a lot of people don't realize that. So, yeah, so that's right. That's mm. Water, water, water. Oh, yeah. It's good for you. It's good for you. So do you know any dates off the top of your head that are coming up? This is going to be coming out mid-March. So I know the week the week of South by Southwest, which this might or might not be out by then. Okay. You're going to be there because I emailed your booking agent about opening for you on a couple of those shows. When is that? March? I'm putting you, I'm putting you on the spot here, Adam Hood. Oh, uh, okay. So that's what, that must be the 8th to the 11th. Uh, no, it's the... March? That next week. March 13th to 17th? Because mm-hmm. nah. I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm in Austin area, the 13th, 14th, 15th. Dude, I'm on spring break. Too bad. Oh, uh, well, spring you, break. What the, no, it is. Oh, the week before that. Yeah. yeah. The, the 9th, 10th, 11th is when you're going to be out there though. You going to open yeah, any South of those? Is the next, well, I don't know. I heard back from them yet. Okay. So gonna, Which ones do you want to open? I think the 10th and 11th. Okay, so we'll Galveston is the 11th. 
The tenth is Dosi Do. So okay, so here's here's yeah, le- yeah the eleventh. I'm in um, Beaumont. So the ninth and the tenth. So the ninth is Magnolia. Okay, so basically, yeah. I mean, I really don't have. Well, I've got. I get, so where are we? We'll talk. Dang. We'll talk. We'll figure it out. Okay. We'll talk after. Man, this is the end of February. That's how it happens, people. Holy you, you get somebody on your podcast and then you call them out. And be like, hey, <laughs> while you're it. here, you, it, do, me, do me a favor. I knew how this was. I knew this was. <laughs> so uh, after that, you got <laughs> your dates pulled up there. After that, where are you going to be? Okay, so, um, man, February's over. That's it. It's over. That's it. Yeah. The end. Okay, it's, so. Yeah. Next week's March. Golly. Okay, so um, let's see. The 8th, I'm going to be at uh, in Kenny, Texas at the Kenny store. Which I've heard that's a really great place, and um, and then uh, Magnolia Motor Lounge the ninth in Fort Worth is another favorite place of mine. March ninth. Um, we're at uh, it says Dosido in Conroe. I think that's I think it's the Woodlands. Yes, yeah, the Woodlands Dosido, which is yeah. which is the, again, the tenth favorite, yeah. and then uh, Galveston at Yaga's, which man, I tell you a funny story. We, this will be the second time I've played there. And the first what time, what is it? Y- it's, Yagas? It's called Yagas, yeah. Uh, y A G A. I've played Apostrophe Woody's S. Beach Bar in Galveston before. Yeah, that's over there by the uh, Surf Club, isn't it? The executive on, Surf Club. I don't know. It's this big wooden bar no, on the beach. I'm talking about Corpus Christi. The Surf Club's in Corpus. Never mind. Oh, okay. Anyway, funny story. Anyway, Yagas. It's our first time playing there, and so it's kind of a you know it's it's on a downtown street so load in's a pain in the butt yeah well, but that's cool to be expected it happens that's right and so but we we get loaded in and this it's like they kind of hired a dj for sound and so it was like so we set up and uh and and the dj starts i mean playing his jams yeah. i got a feeling tonight's gone and and i'm sitting here like before the show yeah yeah before, <laughs> before we're going on and the dance floor is packed, oh, man. I it's know. packed, yep. and there are the lights are everywhere, <laughs> and I am having a panic attack. I'm calling my wife. I'm like, I'm never playing this place again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what these people are expecting of me. <laughs> and I'm sending her videos. And I'm like, look at this, look at this. And so, and I mean, so I, you know, because and the reason why I, the reason why I'm like that usually what happens is, and you know this, I don't have to explain this to you, but yeah. for people that listen to the podcast, they may not right. realize that when you start out with dance music, when you go from dance music to a live band, it's. It's a terrible transition. Absolutely, absolutely. It, in, in, Direct opposite of what it should be. Correct, exactly. Yeah. And the only reason that, that I know that is because I can see their faces. Uh-huh. It doesn't bother me. I don't give a crap. Right. But at the same time... Well, you when, can just see, it's like, uh, I mean, even even if you do the whole band plays for an hour, take a 20, 30 minute break. Well, they play the, they play the dance music. music yes. As soon as the band goes back up, the dance floor clears. That's right. Because it's you, the same thing. Yeah. You know you, I mean? If you walk on stage in the middle of the Cupid shuffle, they're going to get mad at you. <laughs> yeah. We didn't get to finish our Cupid shuffle. Oh. Sorry. I didn't know. Sorry. Damn. I don't, I don't know the Cupid shuffle. Yeah. I don't but know. anyway, so I get so, that in the, was it the, the Casper slide or whatever? Is that a different one? Or is it the same thing? I don't know. I've don't never know. heard of this Casper slide. I don't know. <laughs> Something they, I don't know. Scottsboro, Alabama bar. Comes oh to yeah. Know. There we go. Okay. Yeah. See, anyway, so, go. okay. So, so this, so I, it, it, so panic, panic, panic. We hit the stage and everybody just turns around and starts singing the songs, you know? And I'm like, well, this is the first time in my life that <laughs> this has happened. Songs? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. They, and they went from dance music to like, Adam Hood and and it was a smooth transition and I had a great night and did you go admit, Galveston. did you admit you were wrong later I, absolutely I the minute I got off stage I said well I, I owe you an apology <laughs> I'm sorry to my wife for well, dumping on her <laughs> sorry I mean, I really sorry was. baby I was like this is dumb I'm coming home and I'm getting a job <laughs> take it anymore how does she handle the being on the road thing Man, you know, we we just we we take the baby and we do it. Yeah, you know, and and that's really. She, that, does she come with you sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. And she comes with me a, a a fair amount just because of the fact that you know, it's tough, man. And you know, and I don't, I don't. It's not. I don't know from experience, but I've I've heard and seen it a yeah. lot. So well, and you know, Drew Kennedy of, a, is a good friend of mine, and Drew's got he's got an an older son. He's got one that's close to Drew's age. And, you know, and, and we maybe had one or two conversations about it, you know, but the the one thing he said, he said, you know, he said, I don't know one person that has a family 
and is a musician and doesn't deal with it. You know what I mean? So it's not like it's, you know, we're not singled out and we're not, you know, we're not a, a, a failure at marriage because of the fact that, that, you know, this is hard. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But the thing is, you know, <clears throat> the, the, the plan is, the trick is to try to find a way to not make it as hard. Yeah. And so that's kind of the way, the way that we do it, you know, and, 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 you know, Drew is, man, she's, I mean, we took her to Steamboat this year. Oh yeah. You know? That's and cool. You can go on like my Instagram and there's just this, I mean, I bet there's 30 pictures. She got pictures with Paul Thorne and Bruce Robinson and William Clark Green and, oh, and yeah. Susie Boggess and all this stuff. And so there's all these pictures of these people with my baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and, and the look on the baby, she's not amused, man. I mean, she's, she's like, there. she's like, this is 11 o'clock. What am I doing up? You know, <laughs> I'm like, you're at a show. It's Susie Boggess. She's like, who's got my pacifier? Do y'all do that thing where you put the, the, Soundproof headphones. Man, on we tried, and the only the, the only show that we had to leave was was uh the last show of the the festivals. We was way Bone was playing. Yeah, and it was a full band show. And we you know I wanted to be there. He he invites everybody and says yeah. everybody come sing a song, and so we went. We took the baby, and and man, she just, just wasn't much. having the headphones, you know. And so because they're they're weird headphones, like it's it's I've kind of, seen them on the kids. Oh man, know. strange, you know. And I don't I don't know how you get them to keep them on. So, you know, for the most part, the shows that she saw were, were mostly acoustic shows, you know. And so, but that was the only band show, and we had to, we had to split, you know. So how long have you been married? Uh, let's see. <clears throat> October will be, I want to say, okay. Ah. Uh, six you, years, I think. Okay. Put, put you on the spot again. Here's though. the deal. Here's why I don't do anniversaries. Mm-hmm. I know exactly when my anniversary is. October 7th. Yeah. That's October 6th. Not the same. October sixth. Okay. <laughs> All right. I know exactly when it I is. I know when it is. It's October fourteenth. I mean <laughs> the, I mean that's October. I know exactly October. But okay, so your first an like have you been married you've been married one year if it's your anniversary. See, like are we in our uh, oh, am I in my sixth year or am I in my Did fifth you just have year? your sixth anniversary? See, I don't know. I'm so confused. What by year it. did you get married? Twenty twelve. Okay, so this is 2017, right? And it was October. Yes. So you just you just had in 2016. See? You're getting confused. <laughs> in 2016, you just had your fourth anniversary, right? So you're in your fifth year. So then, what are we going to have our fifth anniversary? Yeah. Why? Because it's after the fourth. I don't understand. <laughs> Are you celebrating going into this endeavor or coming or celebrating the success of it? I don't know. You're confusing me. <laughs> See, now. right. I'm, I'm in, in every, in, and so I've had this conversation with my wife ad nauseum yeah. and with, with people in the family and stuff like that. And so everybody goes, well, what about birthdays? Well, birthdays, they're not confusing to me. The anniversary is, it's confusing. Hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? What if you just, instead of looking at it as an anniversary, what if you just looked at it as the birthday of, <laughs> of your marriage? But is it? Yeah. Okay. Because your 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 marriage was born on October sixth. <laughs> it's our marriage birthday. Yeah. Okay. You You're just, right. Just Thank you. That from now on. Okay. Your marriage birthday. When is your anniversary? You mean my marriage birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Happy marriage birthday, Happy cards. Marriage birthday, babe. Yeah. That's the only way I'm going to be able to get through this because, like I said, you know, and you know how anniversaries all have like, you know, you're supposed to buy like a different thing. Oh yeah, the silver and the this and the that. I've heard yeah. of such things. Well, silver is like 50 years. Like, like I think three years is like a piece of paper, <laughs> or, a, or like it's because it, they, you know, there's you can of course you can Google it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so it's a it, it's funny because like there's a traditional gift and then there's a modern gift and like the traditional one is like you can get like paper or leather. I don't know or, all um, those rules. All these appliance. rules. And I've told, like, all my friends that I graduated high school with have all been, they're all married. Yeah. I think pretty much all of them by now are married. And and I love them all. <clears throat> and they, I've been to uh, most of their weddings. And <laughs> hey, guys, if you're listening. Um, but when, all, when they got married and other people I've known that got married, they have all these rules. Like, well, you're supposed to buy this present for this person. And then... You're supposed to, you know, you should expect something from this person and then by that, by that mother, this gift oh, on this man. day and you all have to have this wedding shower party. But then before that, you got to have this. And it's like, a, oh, yeah. Do they, do they put out like a manual for that? And then something? you do it and then you have to write the thank you notes. For yeah, it. right. Uh, Everything needs a thank you note. 
I mean, I don't know. You man. get, I mean, we write thank you notes for thank you notes that we received. <laughs> Thank, thank you for you. your thank you note. Thank you dearly for your thank you note. I appreciate that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I don't know where it came from. And honestly, the the thing is, what makes sense to me is, is the fact that with the anniversary, like we kind of use it as as just, you know, what am I going to buy you? Because we don't. And kind of what we've decided to do is, like we don't like. We didn't get each other anything for Valentine's Day. I think she got me a card, you yeah. know, and so which was very sweet of her. And she got me a card after the day after Valentine's Day, after saying, "We're not going to get each other anything, okay?" Yeah. And I hold her, you know, and I say, "Okay." And then she goes and gets me yeah. this. This Christmas is like that too. They never, but, they never mean that. I know. They see, never mean. You know, let's just not get each other anything this year. They're always thinking, but I really hope he gets me something. I should know this. <laughs> I married a woman and I should know this. So, uh, but like things like that, you know, and, and, and we're, we'll, we'll do like for birthdays and stuff like that. I go ahead and, you know, let's, let's cut the crap. What do you want for your birthday? I want this. Great. Yeah. Here's what I want for my birthday. I want this, mm-hmm. you know? And so, and yeah, my, my sister and brother-in-law are kind of to that point. Yeah. Like they know, okay, we want to go get this for a birthday. Okay, cool. You know yeah. That? Well, cause guessing games are over when, yeah. when the kids are involved. Number one. And number two, you know, I mean, you get to the point to where like, you know, you, you're not going to get, it's not really presents and you can't just go out and buy crap, you know, cause it's Tuesday, you yeah. know? Well, so you have to, you have to like choose what you want for your birthday to purchase things. Yeah, exactly. We've been needing this DVD or whatever, you know, Let's wait wait on my birthday. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. If you need to go get it anyway. But, uh, so there's that. And then anniversaries is kind of what we get for each other. Yeah. And so, so that helps, you know, Sort of. What'd you What'd you get each other for your anniversary last year? For your wait, hold on. For your marriage birthday last year, a Bible. Yeah, because it was leather. Oh, oh, so our, and that's what you were supposed to do on your. Yes, and so we got a family Bible that is like says the Hood family. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. look at there. How and about that? How about that? Happy. But you know what's funny? Like, so our our uh, our wedding birthday is on the sixth of October, and uh, it was like February. Like oh, when you it was like last something? month yeah. when we got the like okay finally let's just do this. Jeez, terrible. So look, be on the lookout for the new Adam Hood album in the next year. Man, let's hope, let's hope, let's hope we at least can get get really moving and making some progress this year. I mean, are you going to do the crowdfunding thing again? I know you've done that, and you've done that in the past. Yeah, I did Kickstarter last time with yeah. the Welcome to the Big World. Um, I, yeah, I mean it, it's. I'm probably going to do that again. I'm looking at, I'm almost in the same spot you're in. I'd like to record this year sometime, mm-hmm. and but I don't know where or when yet. So, but I'm definitely going to do the Kickstarter thing again. I mean, yeah. why not? Why not? I agree. Yeah. I mean, it really, theoretically, it's great. Number one, it's just like pre ordering, and you, you know, everybody gets to go ahead and reserve their copy and help make the thing happen. Yeah. You know, they're a part of it, and it just kind of brings everybody together to make. The thing, you know. Well, and it's kind of getting, you, you know, well, yeah, it's what you said. I mean, it's, it's it it helped to me get excited as much as it did, you know. I hope it makes everybody else kind of get excited about the record, too, you know. I mean, I'm in the thing, like, I, I'm i not really great at pitching stuff and selling stuff, you know what I mean? So, it's, yeah. it's you know, which is probably something that I ought to work on. But, you know, it's, you, you really kind of That's on the got, list of things that I didn't know were as <clears throat> as important as they are, like when I moved to town, that was one of the things when I got in the music business that you realize, oh man, I'm basically a salesman too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, I got to sell my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, but yeah, the, I'm with you. I yeah. didn't realize that either. So yeah, when you do the crowdfunding thing, it's, it's like asking people to be a part of it, but then there's also that like pitching, you're kind of pitching it, but it's really just saying, Hey, you know, be a part of, of the process. You know? Yeah. Well, and, and I've, I've had to, I've had to come to terms with it the same way you have, Yeah. but you know, the positive thing that I've, the thing that I've really kind of taken from it is if, if there's anybody that should believe in my music, it should be me, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, and so the, the only product that anybody can sell is a product you believe in, you know? And I mean, do I, do, do I think that my music is the best thing I've ever heard? Nah, absolutely not. That's not the point. Yeah. I, I do think that, that I put, 
100% of my heart into everything I do. You know what I mean? I think that's if awesome. I'm going to sit important. down and yeah. write a song, I think you got every square inch of anything that I can accomplish with every song that I write. And that's going to be my performance of it. Now, is is that's as far as quality goes, I mean, there, there are things that are other variables that, that may be out of my control. But as far as that goes, you know, that's, yeah, you're, awesome. you're going to get the best of me with every song. You yeah, know? when I've... <clears throat> when I've been in the studio and recorded solos or whatever on mm-hmm. songs, I'll play it. And then if I felt good about the solo and the producer or the engineer would ask me, you know, what do you think about that? And listen to it. And I'm like, well, that sounds like me playing a solo. You know? It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's not flawless. I'm right. not Eddie Van Halen or anything, but <laughs> like, that's me. That's a good solo from Jacob Stiefel. And that's what, you know, that I believe in that. So let's use that. That's know? right. Yeah. So I'll be, yeah, it's what you're, you know, same kind of thing you're saying, but well, cool. I have, I've enjoyed this. This has been cool. Yeah, me too, talk. man. I really have to pee. Okay. So we're going to call this thing quits. Best call. Anything <laughs> else you want to, uh, links or anything? anything yeah. You it's adamhood.com. Just, just go to my website and that'll take you to everything else. But thanks dude. Yeah. Man, have, thanks this was, was really fun. We'll do it again. Okay. Let's do it again. Awesome. See you, man. See you. And that was my talk with Adam Hood. And that was a little clip of us jamming on some acoustic guitars here at the house. And man, it was fun having Adam in. Uh, check him out at adamhood.com for all things Hood related. And I will throw that up and his social medias on the show notes page from this episode, which can be found at don'tstifleme.com slash 003. Thanks again, y'all, for listening to the Don't Stifle Me podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please, please subscribe or share, like, review. Any or all of these would be greatly appreciated. And if you have any feedback or questions, you can sure email those to me at jacob at don'tstifleme.com. The podcast social medias are at DSM Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. This episode is sponsored by me, Jacob Stiefel, singer, songwriter, artist. I've got CDs on iTunes and other digital music outlets. There's merchandise and tour dates up at jacobstiefel.com. And my social medias are at Jacob Stiefel, J-A-C-O-B-S-T-I-E-F-E-L, on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Okie doke, folks. Well, another one bites the dust. Hey, hey, another one bites the dust. Oh, yeah. If you enjoyed this, please help us spread the word. But either way, muchas gracias for listening. And I'll be back for the next episode, and I really hope you will, too. Until then, here's some more of Adam and yours truly picking on some guitars here at the house. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Thanks, dude. Thank you.